so this is about a 36th article till yesterday we have completed 35 articles india gives bangladesh key rail infra this is uh, not much important just it is a basic information regarding contribution of india to neighboring countries it will help you in value enhancement content enhancement in your mains answers <coughs> ministry of railways in india handed over 20 broad gauge locomotives to bangladesh this is a support given to bangladesh so railway ministry has mentioned this it is part of this uh, system is deployed by pm gati shakti scheme did uh, did you know that uh, uh, previous year questions related to pm gati shakti yojana 2 years ago in 2020 okay there was mains question came in the upsc regarding pre pm gati shakti yojana please look into that uh, scheme once again next shashan aplia dari launch shashan aplia dari launch what does it mean it is government at doorstep initiative government at doorstep initiative like uh, ap volunteer system it is also government doorstep initiative okay anyway sir chief minister ekna sinde launched this scheme shashan aplia dari that means government at doorstep initiative aimed at providing benefits of government schemes at one place what do they do they'll conduct a workshop in which various departments will come and collaborate to deliver services and address the grievances of the uh, particular uh, uh, mandal suppose uh, this workshop is conducted in a town of a district so all the departments will exist there anybody can come and approach those people who uh, who who can attend that workshop and they can submit their grievances immediately if possible they will resolve those grievances this is called government at doorstep it doesn't mean they will not go to door door to door okay they will solve the problem at one particular place this is a one stop solution so likewise they will conduct workshops frequently from one place to another place they will do this is a mobile van type of workshop in which every department is existing and they are reaching the remotest parts of this country right district administration have been asked to organize two day camps as part of this initiative what is this district collectors organize two day camps for citizens under this program by using funds from various departments it is not one particular department fund so district collectors they will collect the uh, fund from agriculture rural development social justice and tribal development skill development school education among others and what are the benefits like it will save time in, because citizens are not required to uh, uh, do long distance journey to uh, reduce their grievances so hassle free in addressing various issues from multiple government offices cost reduction and next transparency because it is invisible very clear it is in front of everybody all departments are there it is not possible to do corrupt activities at the time so empowerment active involvement of the decision making process and access to information this is part of empowerment because when you integrate few people and when you bring inclusivity it is nothing but empowerment and efficiency definitely the service delivery is much faster compared to other forms of uh, delivery at various offices instead of going to various offices because one particular uh, problem or grievance can be solved by two to three departments therefore at one stop all services will be available through this through this program this is government at doorstep okay initiative national medical commission's guidelines national and few of these concepts were given from various initiatives in public sector taken by government this was a book published by niti ayog yesterday one of our aspirants has shared to me and few of these articles were directly taken from there also because these have been repeatedly come in our they have been coming in our uh, press information bureau as well as in hindu editorials okay national medical commission's guidelines what is this national medical commission guideline a guideline to assess whether a candidate with disability may enroll in a medical course whether candidate should receive the benefit of the quota so this is regarding the quota to the disability people in the medical courses whether they are eligible to be or not so these recommendations were given by a 16 member expert committee what are the highlights in it so despite the mandate much of the recommendations don't talk of advancement in assistive devices or treatments so what are these highlights because the ma mandate is given the quota is given by irrespective of that recommendations are not talking about advancement in providing them assistance for the disability people and the existing guidelines saying that anyone with more than 40% disability are eligible they will be eligible for medical course and quota if the disability can be brought below 40% with aids okay aid a i mean any assistance and tools and inclusive recommendations what are these inclusive recommendations 
Suppose two members from psychiatry department reasoned that there was no threat to patient safety in allowing those with more than the benchmark disability due to mental illness, learning disabilities, or autism spectral diseases, anything related to it. So this is about uh, providing guidelines with respect to people who are suffering from disability entering into the courses related to medical education. This is a Medical Council of India has given such a rulings. So who can give such a ruling? It is not ICMR. Suppose if I ask you one question, one statement related to ICMR will deal into certain issues we, like by research and development and publishing of the general and giving approval for the trials for clinical, clinical trials regarding vaccine development. These are fine. But with respect to medical education sector, who will regulate and who will give certain guidelines to the government of India? This is Medical Council of India. Medical Council of India. So those regulations were not required in depth. Just that is an application oriented learning. Now you can understand what is the role of the Medical Council of India. One application which you have read is helpful for you to understand its role. For example, Medical Council of India was established in 1934 under the Indian Medical Council Act 1933. Therefore, what is the difference between ICMR and Medical Council of India? ICMR is an apex body but it's not statutory body. It is a statutory body clearly passed under an Act, Medical Council Act, Indian Medical Council Act 1933. And with the aim of functioning of establishment uh, regarding standards in higher education sector in the medicine and recognition of medical qualification in India and abroad. So who, who has to certify MBBS graduate? This is under the guidelines given by Medical Council of India. Okay. So the whole act, suppose if I give you an option initially that uh, ICMR will certify an individual's graduation which is uh, whether it is a medical graduate or not. It is not possible with respect to ICMR. Okay, it is a research oriented one, but it is with respect to education regulator or administrator, a guideline provi providing certain guidelines, prospects like that. So the old act was repealed in 1956. New act was enacted in its place. The new act was further modified in 64, 33 and 2001 like that. So this is Medical Council Act in 1933 providing a statutory body named to be Medical Council of India it is main role is to provide standards for higher education sector especially in the field of medicine and recognition of those graduates who are qualified in the medical sector whether they are qualified from abroad or India. Suppose uh, somebody studied their MBBS in Afghanistan. Will Medical Council of India recognize it? They have to keenly thoroughly check into it, right? This is possible. Therefore, Medical Council of India will thoroughly check, look into those issues also. Next, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. So, in a commendable initiative, what is this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan with respect to higher education sector? Again, you will be seeing that. So, in a commendable initiative, approximately 15,000 students from 10 districts in Andhra Pradesh have joined hands to bring about significant development in various villages, remotest parts of the villages. This Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. They have participated in this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. What is this project? It is aiming to bridge the urban rural divide. Urban rural divide and uplift rural communities by providing them with essential amenities and infrastructure. Like they can talk like Meghna. Okay. By getting trained under this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. So this is very easy to remember for, from your. Okay. So under the Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, students from various education institutions are actively involved in identifying needs and challenges they will bridge the gap between rural and urban, right? This is a rural urban divide will be uh, that lacuna will be filled through this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan in which most of the students will participate and get trained under this scheme. Simple. So the students have taken up the diverse raging pro, uh, like access to clean drinking water, construction, sanitation facilities and improving their healthcare services, digital literacy, okay, enhancing agriculture practice. These all are also part of this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. It has also taken support from state and central government. It is a combined force, combined effort from the state and central government, which are providing certain financial and technical expertise and resources. Next, what about Unnat Bharat Abhiyan? It is a flagship program of Ministry of Education. As you know that it is very easy to identify under which ministry this program is introduced. Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, it is with respect to the higher education sector and skill development area in which uh, various streams of education is involved. Uh, the stream may be from even uh, digital literacy and also communication skills, sanitation, construction, all these areas and providing certain amenities as well like clean drinking water, toilets and construction, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. Under Ministry of Education, it was launched in 2000, 
14. The aim is to link higher education institutions with a set of at least 5 villages so that what is this higher education institution? Suppose an IIT is there in Hyderabad. It has, it, it has been given certain tasks to uplift those rural communities with skills and certain facilities. Therefore, this IIT will take up those 5 particular institutes, okay, for particular 5 villages. Likewise, so any uh, big institute in collaboration with this Unnath Bharat Abhiyan in ministry under Ministry of Education will be dealing with the five villages to uplift the rural community, especially the students, to get trained under their various skill development programs. So these institutions can contribute to economical as well as social betterment of those village communities using their knowledge base. These higher education institutions will contribute for the upliftment of those younger generations who are coming from these remotest villages. So major domains here are, two major domains are there. One, one is for holistic development of villages, that is human development, holistic development and the second one is economic development in an integrated way. So it is not only for the upliftment of rural youth but also for the holistic development of entire village segment okay which is actually contributed from higher education institution the higher education institution which is um, this higher education institution is also provided certain support from central and state government with respect to equipment material and infrastructure and other amenities so this iit delhi for example has been designated as the national coordinating institute for the unnat bharat abhiyan scheme it also takes up certain villages to uplift them and it will coordinate with other institutes as well whether how much progress they have attained under this Unnath Bharat Abhiyan. Somebody is there to coordinate this program. Unnath Bharat Abhiyan is to uplift the rural youth, especially the students who has to participate in various skill development initiatives taken by higher education institutions. Each higher education institution is allocated five villages under this Unnath Bharat Abhiyan. These five villages will be holistically developed by these IITs, okay? And coordinating IIT is Delhi, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, okay? Delhi IIT, it's national institution. Next, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan 2.4, it is the upgraded version of Unnat Bharat Abhiyan 1.4. It was launched in 2018. And Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, phase one was the invitation mode in which participating institutions were invited to be part of this Unnat Bharat Abhiyan. Okay, and what about this UB, Unnath Bharat Abhiyan 2.4 challenge? It is mode of Unnath Bharat Abhiyan program only, where higher education institutions are required to willingly adopt at least 5 villages. Currently, this 2.4 mode is going on. Okay. What is smart cities, real incubators of the new urban India. And this is about uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and Petroleum Natural Gas. They both have announced this members of consultative committee of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs about this progress of Smart Cities Mission. The Smart Cities Mission was announced in 2015, 2014 only and Vizag was announced as Smart City. So how smart it is now you can see how Vizag. Okay, the implementation of the mission at city level is done by a special purpose vehicle. What is the special purpose vehicle? If any financial gap is witnessed while executing any program irrespective of economic outcomes the financial needs should be addressed by a, a special purpose vehicle which is funded by central or state governments. A particular vehicle, so what is the special purpose vehicle? To implement any particular program, you require some part of resources, financial resources. But to after implementation of this program, you may not get economic outcomes as much as you have invested. You have invested 100 rupees but the returns may not be a, more than 80%. So what will you do? So that 20% lacuna will be filled through special purpose vehicle. Okay. That, that is why we call it as special purpose vehicle to execute a particular program to fill the gaps to implement those programs. Okay. Okay. So is a smart city mission. The implementation of the mission at city level is done by why I am explaining special purpose vehicle. Even UPSC is very mad to ask those basics. Okay. UPSC has asked various basic questions like UPI, quick response code, Bureau of Indian Standards, even Beam app, Beam app, how, how many authentications are there, how many steps and levels of authentication is there with respect to Beam app, then you need to download it immediately. And it has also asked about LED light that we have imparted now. Okay, it light emitting diode question. Several times, UPSC has asked various questions and electronic appliances, the guidelines, instructions given there. 
okay for electronic appliances refrigerators okay and the tvs a near field communication when an employee is walking with a near uh, barcode it will uh, with with a one meter distance that near field communication will navigate and communicate whether he is an employee or not it will immediately recognize without any wiring connectivity okay this near field communication was also asked in upsc and rfid tags on highways also you will be seeing this fast tag which is imported on your vehicles this uh, radio frequency identification technology all these application oriented daily life questions were asked by upsc for last 6 to 7 years you can witness them right therefore those basic questions will be asked by upsc please keep them in mind so implementation of the mission you need to see the pvqs and next few current issues which have been repeatedly asked for last one year and next basics like ncert books what are the inspiring elements for the examiner while framing a question first the basic textbooks and the second one pvqs and third one is third one is current static based questions based on current affairs only again suppose uh, vedantic mines and niyamgiri hills dispute happen in odisha therefore they have asked three times regarding the question related to scheduled areas okay if any land is coming under schedule and forest builders act which is under dispute for several years and recently 19 lakh people were given their lands back therefore schedule areas question was asked in 2019 the same question was repeated in 2022 and 2023 as well who will designate them as scheduled tribe and who will uh, uh, what is the consequence of integrating or uh, designating a community under scheduled tribe and if you make a land to be part of scheduled uh, scheduled areas what is the consequence of it these are the questions they have asked for last 3 years you please go through them 2023 22 and 2019 as well so next implementation of the mission at city level is done by a special purpose vehicle playing an instrumental role in monitoring the projects to utilize the full potential of this path breaking the mission okay so i have explained you about special purpose vehicle to implement this smart cities mission what is the actual role given to the special purpose vehicle any gaps are there it will fulfill those gaps act while implementing this next key highlights of this scheme smart cities mission launched on 25th jan in 2015 it is aiming at providing core infrastructure clean sustainable environment and decent quality of life to the citizens and it will also provide ease of governance and smart city solutions smart solutions especially by bringing digital solutions so 100 cities are selected at two stage competition to be developed as smart cities which are showing a satisfactory progress they are claiming that these smart cities are functioning very well that we need to also agree the, agree to the government because you you don't question them next the concept of smart cities has gained significant momentum in india with the government's ambitious plan to develop 100 smart cities across the country government has announced 100 smart cities in two stage uh, improvement program by providing these uh, services like cleanliness sustainable environment and also quality life to the citizens with digital solutions okay this is the major theme of the smart cities and puducherry's first fast track court i will again conduct a rapid marathon after end of this session okay so all 35 40 articles will be discussed at the end immediately next puducherry's first fast track court what is this first fast track court this puducherry integrated court in puducherry to facilitate expeditious trials and disposal of cases under this pokso act okay that is protection of children from sexual offences this acting chief justice of madras high court has inaugurated this special fast track court to deal with the cases related to pokso under pokso itself they have mentioned to immediately disseminate the uh, cognizable offences related to pokso they have established this fast track courts the first fast track court was initiated in the puducherry itself under this pokso act recently this pokso act was amended last year okay this has uh, these amendments came into picture Uh, they have mentioned certain uh, uh, um, stringent criminal provisions in it okay and fast uh, to immediate uh, to disseminate the service and judicially serv- judicial service with respect to these pokso acts they need to establish special courts fast track courts means what exclusively they deal with pokso cases only okay these are fast track courts to de- immediately disseminate those services so fast track special court concept is it in, in 2019 just i have told you in two years ago they have passed a recent judgment amended and accordingly they have established fast track courts the government approved a scheme for setting up around 1000 plus fast track courts under this pokso act okay Expedi- so immediate disposal of pending rape cases under this indian penal code and also crimes under pokso act 
and supreme court also directed setting up of a centrally funded special court in each district where more than 100 fir are filed okay this is also one of the initiative policy interventions taken by the gov government in the field of governance right so fast track courts are dedicated courts as already i have explained to you these are dedicated exclusively for the purpose of pokso delivery right next about pokso that this is to protect children from offenses re from sexual assault sexual harassment and pornography and provide for establishment of special courts for trials such of, of such offenses for matters connected therewith are incidental thereto who is the nodal ministry for it ministry of women and child development for pokso okay the nodal ministry for pokso act is ministry of women and child development next tamil nadu extends ban on tobacco and nicotine products tamil nadu so, Tamil Nadu is extending ban on manufacturing, storage, transport, distribution, sale of. Yesterday, you had heard about it. Shall I ask you that question? Yeah. E cigarette. Okay. E cigarette. Okay. Definition. Yeah. Even air, any, any substance which is heated and producing aerosols is banned. Whether it contains hookah, whether it contains nicotine or not. Okay. It, is, it may have whatever size it may be. The size may be in cigarette form or <laughs> whatever. Okay. Electronic cigarette or non electronic as well. Okay. If it releases aerosols after burning a substance. Okay. And with, without even producing heat or not, not producing also. If aerosol is released without even nicotine having or not, if aerosol is released, that substance has to be banned according to the e cigarette ban. So, accordingly, the same says, same e-cigarette also, what is the definition of e-cigarette and what are the preventive mechanisms that they have introduced in it here, storage is prevented, transportation, distribution, sale and next, chewable food products also, even tobacco which is chewable, okay, and part of this food product containing tobacco and nicotine which will be in effect for one year starting from May 23, this was a Tamil Nadu court judgment. This is a value addition and substantiation. Uh, that was a center's notification issued to ban the e-cigarette and this was a consequence of it. Okay. State government has responded positively. Very simple that I would like to tell you. Next, Swadesh Darshan 2.0 scheme. What is this? Following the inclusion of this Puducherry and Karaikal regions under center's Swadesh Darshan 2.0, Territorial administration has inked a pact with LNT Engineering Limited. LNT, it is also part of our metro development, right? And it also works in various parts of our neighboring countries. LNT, one of the prominent companies which are part of this infrastructure development. To prepare a concept paper, initiate consultation with stakeholders regarding detailed project report DPR to augment infrastructure in tourism spots. This is part of Swadesh Darshan scheme. What is it will develop certain circuits which will have thematic in nature. Say so, Ramayana circuit, Ayodhya, and likewise, wildlife circuit, spiritual circuit, Tirdankara circuit. Tirdankara is a theme that means a particular essence, a core theme, core essence, core in, in, aspect. So, rural circuit, tribal circuit. So, 100% it is funded central. Okay, it is funded from central government only. Swadesh Darshan scheme. Okay, Swadesh Darshan scheme was launched in 2014 15 for integrated development of the theme based tourist circuits. So, this year UPSC 2000. Uh, 24 is very important because of the government is going to complete its tenure of 10 years. So, definitely its achievements will be one of the major themes in the UPSC mains as well. Okay, already government accomplishments have been asked several times in the UPSC mains like PM Gat Shakti Yojana. Okay. And similarly, and uh, uh, similarly, there may be a possible question with respect to government's accomplishment or achievements. Uh, with respect to skill development, manufacturing sector, and like uh, various uh, social sector initiatives, like Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, like that is why Niti Aayog has released this social sectors, the book released by Niti Aayog with respect to contribution made by the government for last 10 years in the empowerment of society. So, Ministry of Social Justice Empowerment, uh, these are the themes that you need to identify, please. It was launched in 2014-15 for integrated development of theme-based tourist circuit, that is Buddhist circuit, coastal, desert circuit, eco circuit, heritage circuit. So, I can ask you one may, um, prelims MCQ like which of the following are one of the, uh, which, which of the following are not part of the uh, themes identified in under, under Swadesh Darshan scheme. Okay. 
so you need to understand the themes related to buddhist circuit is there coastal desert desert circuit is northwest part of india buddhist circuit is where buddha is located those circuit those spots tourism spots are identified and highlighted thematically by the ministry next desert circuit eco circuit heritage circuit like northeast circuit himalayan circuit sufi circuit sufi circuit krishna circuit ramayana circuit please remember this and rural spiritual tirthankara wildlife tribal circuits okay northeast circuit is different tribal circuit is different ramayana krishna circuit you can remember buddhist circuit okay fine and next spiritual rural circuit and tirthankara circuit is related to jains jainism so definitely you need to address everything coastal and desert this is with respect to the geographical features and religious belief system diversity so you can remember in that way next what is this scheme in the main mantra of this one is vocal for local scheme vocal for local swadesh so darshan instead of um, making them to visit maldives you should you try to visit our coastal circuit coastal circuit and uh, under this coastal circuit our lakshadweep is also part suppose so people may visit our own premises that is swadesh darshan scheme then you will also integrate your cultural assimilation like you bring some cultural assimilation if you incorporate such a value of swadesh darshan scheme like ajadi ka amrit mahotsav has also brought such kind of integrity feeling right so vocal for local the revamped scheme namely swadesh darshan which is to seek atmanirbharata in the tourism sector at realize by realizing india's full potential as a tourism destination how many of you visited northeastern states suppose if i would like to go somewhere else so we mostly prefer to go to abroad suppose okay so therefore they want to bring our swadesh darshan as one of the major thing that is vocal for local so by releasing india's full potential as tourism destination it is one of the best destinations for tourism swadesh darshan 2.0 is not incremental change but a generational shift to evolve swadesh darshan scheme as a holistic mission to develop our sustained responsible tourism destinations okay next kerala first e govern state okay kerala itself has declared it is first e govern state okay government uh, central government has to central government as also very yes very positive about performance of kerala in digitalization okay hence the southern state of india is set to make a history by declaring as country's first total e govern state so building upon its reputation as the first e first fully literate state in india kerala has achieved this milestone through a series of policy initiatives because of its 100% literacy and most of the people have at least completed their secondary education it is quite easy for them to implement this 100% digitalization it is quite natural so which is which is the state declared to be completely organic sikki right likewise the kerala is 100% digital state so 100% digital literacy has been attained in the kerala this is a knowledge based economy the government has digitized the delivery of vital services uh, ensuring transparency inclusivity and accessibility for all citizens this was declared by kerala so digital empowerment was achieved okay fine next samarth campaign to promote digital transactions at gram panchayat level samarth campaign to promote digital transactions at gram panchayat level this union ministry of rural development has introduced this scheme that is the campaign named to be samarth for promoting digital transaction in about 50000 gram panchayats in about 50000 gram panchayats under this amrut mahotsav in lucknow okay so key points are the ministry which is a rural development ministry of india is running this samarth campaign under promoting digital transaction in 50000 gram panchayats therefore what is actually why should we read this one because it is very simple the statements will be given simple but we commit fundamental mistakes with respect to facts like if i give you that uh, to empower rural community in digital transaction which is coming under the ministry of meti like minister of electronics and information technology therefore we commit mistake so but it is for the purpose of whom rural development so digitalization in rural sector especially 50 panchayats were selected by ministry of rural development the samarth campaign was launched by ministry of rural development for digital empowerment of rural india okay next under azadi ka 
Amrit Macho. So whatever you see, whatever you learn, everything should be seen through the lens of the UPSC MCQ. Therefore, it is easy for you to remember. Instead of uh, completely reading the document, just see where the MCQs were framed, where, maybe, where MCQs may be framed, and the chances of framing MCQs may be with respect to the fact and ministries and their schemes, under which ministry the scheme comes, and the provisions of the scheme, and basic statistics and data trends, and they will not mention exact statistics and figures most of the times. If they mention, that will be mostly wrong in the sense that several times UPSC has committed such a... Uh, I mean, uh, wrong uh, sentences also. So, next, self-help groups, NPA is coming down from 9.58% in 2013 to below 2%. Self-help groups, NPA is coming from 9.58% in 2013 to below 2%. That is important. The key thrust of the summer campaign is to promote, a, promote digital transaction, which is a testimony here. It has improved. Okay, next. Uh, this Sakhi's in Uttar Pradesh alone did 5 crore 57 lakh transactions. Sakhi one stop solution portal okay, for women. Okay. Next, Pan India Milk and Milk Product Surveillance. Pan India Milk and Milk Product Surveillance. Food Safety and Standards Authority of India comes under which ministry? Okay. Okay, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. Is it statutory word or regulatory word? Okay, somewhat better. Somebody, somebody is saying statutory, that is fine. Okay, Food Safety and Standard Authority of India saying that pan-Indian surveillance will be done on a large scale by collecting samples of uh, this uh, milk from both organized and unorganized sector. Okay, the packed milk and unpacked uh, loose milk. Okay, they will collect samples, they will check whether they are coming under the standards provided by the Food Safety and Standards Authority. This is a statutory body actually. The country's food regulator said that it will conduct nationwide surveillance of milk and milk products and the efforts are ongoing and it will curb adulteration of any milk products. It will not tolerate any adulteration of milk product. This pan-India surveillance system is a large scale collecting samples of both from both sides, organized and unorganized sector. And what is the purpose of this initiate? The purpose is to simply bringing some rationality behind choosing which milk is better for the health and whether they are following the standards, any adulteration is taking place, okay, and with respect to dairy products, and milk contains in vital micronutrients or not, the balanced diet, uh, the milk is also part of providing balanced diet, therefore, it should contain vitamins, minerals, micronutrients as well, uh, macro, along with macro, and people of every age group include milk or milk products in their daily diet. So, this is administered by health and family welfare. Have you shocked? Okay, fine. So, FSSA is administered by whom? Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So, what was the assumption that you that came into your mind when I have asked it comes under which ministry? Which ministry? Male Cadastration, Food Safety, Standards Authority of India. You assume it to be which ministry? Please. So, something else. You assumed wrong. Ultimately, this is Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The body is functional as part of Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. So, this is a statutory body. So, any body which is mentioned under, under an act, it is considered to be statutory body. If it is mentioned in the article of a constitution, it is coming under constitutional body, simple. Next, about FSSA, it is an autonomous statutory body, maintains food safety and standards in India. Okay. It is administered by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Kindly remember this. Next, Gandhi deferred the accreditation of National Human Rights Commission. Gandhi, sorry, I am saying Gandhi. Gandhi, not Gandhi, Gandhi. Okay, Global Alliance. This is a global alliance. I just Whenever we see G-A-N, we automatically, our mind will read Gandhi only. G-A-N by it. Gandhi. Gandhi deferred that. What, what is this global alliance? This is with respect to national human rights institutions okay whether they will uh, they will follow uh, whether they are following certain standards and norms prescribed by our ganhri global alliance for national human rights institutions and they have ranked our human rights institute that is national human rights commission our human rights institute is nhrc they have ranked our nhrc is very poor because of certain reasons 
what are the reasons behind it what are the reasons for such deferment why they are not considering our national human rights commission standards are not up to their global alliance standards global alliance for national human rights institutes which is actually ranking the standards of various human rights institutions in respective countries in the world okay our country has a human rights institute named to be nhrc this nhrc is not following standards up to their expectations made by this global alliance for human rights institutes so what is the problem here political interference in appointments of national human rights commission and involving police in probes into human rights violations so police should never involve or interfere into a probe that is done by human rights commission okay actually police personnel was the main one to violate the human rights so they should never interfere into it okay next lack of diversity in staff and leadership lack of diversity and staff in leadership and next insufficient action to protect marginalized groups so if you criticize any body of the constitution any body of statutory you should have some substantiation how will you justify your criticism are you an activist no so you should justify with a report given by somebody else so you should throw on them comfortably when your anger can be uh, thrown through someone else so global alliance on human rights institute for human rights national human rights institute has been uh, reiterating several times that our nhrc is not up to the standards uh, prescribed by them like uh, for example political interference and lack of sufficient staff and manpower leadership insufficient action to protect marginalized sections of the society and definitely marginal people may not get may not get any access to these uh, several times i have seen no problem uh, because poor cooperation with civil society because we have some influence we can call somebody and we can get done to the justice okay but when it comes to marginal sections it is why highly pathetic they don't know anything they cannot approach anybody and poor, therefore insufficient action to protect marginalized groups we know everything but only need is substantiation validity to our point okay instead of making uh, a statement as allegation making an authentic statement is more important so how do you make your statement is more authentic because of the substantiation and validity that you bring from report statistics which are authentic in nature so this global alliance for national human rights institutes has been giving certain problems in indian human rights commission okay so what is this nhrc it was a statutory body which was formed after uh, in uh, after two, 2003 amendment act to the 1993 act 1993 act was named to be protection of human rights act which is amended by 2006 amendment act the statute under which it is established under 1993 again it was amended in 2006 and next it was set up in conformity with the paris principles paris principles that you haven't under, known till now you know that this is a statutory body formed under an act and year fine but it was formed under paris principles okay niti ayog's annual health index for the covid year of 2020 21 released annual this in 2017 niti ayog has introduced various indexes and health was one of those uh, health index was introduced by niti ayog among various states what are the best performing states that they will rank okay annual health index was launched in 2017 by niti ayog the health index is weighted composite index based on 24 indic indicators there are 24 indicators grouped under domains of health outcomes governance and information and key inputs okay info how feasible to get information related to health and the outcomes related to vaccination or health uh, diagnosis systems and also the governance in the health sector okay these are the important elements under this health index for four broad parameters these were grouped as 24 indicators okay under this health index so the health index measures the performance of states and union territories on a weighted composite score accordingly here there are better performing states that is first one is tamil nadu and second one first one is kerala and second one is tamil nadu and third one that we can say proudly that telangana telangana has performed very well compared to all 20, 20 28 states and other union territories okay 29 that one is uh, third one is telangana first one is kerala and second one is tamil nadu so next the worst performing states were as usual 
we all know about uh, 17th rank is madhya pradesh next up next bihar okay up bihar and be, they are very furious about these things we should never discuss so one of the panel members that i have personal experience that uh, i am doing daf analysis for their mock interview because they won't do daf analysis of 24 30 pages of each student while doing this mock interview they are ex board member of upsc only they are doing their interview we are giving the questions related to for a candidate who is coming from uttar pradesh and bihar we are framing a question related to these points they were offended because they they are not offended when we frame a question why irrespective of better social outcomes in kerala still witnessing less per capita income compared to north western states of india they are very comfortable okay kerala is uh, compared to north western states haryana and punjab kerala has less per capita income irrespective of better social outcomes like imr mmr areas and literacy rate okay if i ask less per capita income confusing question for a kerala candidate the board member is very comfortable because for last 75 years i need to cut this one last 75 years there is no single southern indian represented upsc board as chairperson that is the case that they are still offended but when i ask a question related to reduced state sex ratio okay and pathetic performance of these northwestern states that is haryana and punjab they will get offended okay if i use the term bimaro they will not accept so uttar pradesh and bihar this is niti ayog index only it is also prepared by ah uh, those people only right they are preparing but they will not consider this one so this is the issue that uh, most of the southern candidates must enter into the bureaucracy and that i hope we can make them may make it possible very soon but by making them friends as well <laughs> we had very soon one of the chair persons will come here and take session okay okay next unicef who world health organization world bank group releases a report on child wasting in india okay united nation children emergency fund world health organization and world bank group releasing a report on child wasting in india what is the condition already i have discussed yesterday what is the rate of stunting and wasting yesterday to you or not i don't know remember okay not with you with my d3 students okay recently unicef united nation international children emergency fund world health organization and world bank group they three together released a report and titled as levels and trends in child malnutrition joint child malnutrition estimates that is jme joint malnutrition estimates that is child malnutrition estimates so jme three letters are there three organizations are there what are those three organizations unicef who next w bank world bank next stating that in 2020 18.7% of indian children were affected by wasting caused by pure poor nutrient intake okay so uh, this what is this joint malnutrition estimate jme group was created in 2011 to address the call for harmony child nutrition estimates their estimation is mostly accurate in nature because of three organizations together are working to provide accurate estimates to reduce this wasting in children okay so findings of this report what is the finding of this report this is more important while answering your mains as well half of all children with wasting in the world live in india next second point is half of all children with wasting in the world are living in india so across in across the world 800 people crore okay i haven't counted properly i don't know but as per the reports 800 crore okay and 150 crore it seems but they haven't taken any census till now so i assume to be 150 crore and so uh, 150 crore population out of 800 crore but wasting terms in terms of wasting that is the weight according to their up to 5 years of age low weight this low weight and low height low height means stunting low weight means the weight um, person okay the body mass index also included here so when it comes to half of all children with wasting in the world live in india as per the report given by whom jme report joint child malnutrition report this report uh, estimates report jme given by world bank world health organization unicef okay and in 2022 an estimated 
report is and report has estimated that 45 million children under 5 45 million children under 5 under 5 six were affected by wasting globally and remaining percent half of are india okay of which 13.6 million were suffering from severe wasting okay anyways stunting aspect india had a stunting rate of 31% 31.7% point just leave it no problem in 2022 down from 41% in 2012 a decade ago decade ago okay next aspect this, this is around 10% was decrease about it is decreased by about 10% compared to 2020 2012 ratings 2012 to 2022 in 10 year 10 years of period that india had stunting india had reduced its stunting rate from 41% to 31% and some 148 million people uh, million of children that is 14 crore uh, around 15 uh, 2 lakh takwa 15 crore okay okay million of children under age 5 worldwide were affected by stunting so anyways india had an overweight percentage of 2.8% in 2012 2022 compared to 2.2% in 2012 so uh, parallelly we are also increasing obesity <laughs> okay 2.8% in 2022 next world health organization global nutrition targets what is the target of world health organization that is named as global nutrition targets reduce stunting by 40% in children under f under 5 already always you take stunting or wasting whatever with them under this world health organization the target is below 5 years of age children okay the target group are 5 years age children below 5 years age so reduce stunting by 40% next reduce the prevalence of anemia by 50% for the age group of women in the between 1949 next 30% reduction in low birth weight ensure 30% reduction in low birth weight as per global nutrition targets by world health organization global nutrition target by world health organization kindly remember the statistics the statistics is very clear that you need to reduce stunting by 40% anemia by around 50% for women between the age group of 19 to 49 and next reduction of overweight uh, underweight sorry low birth weight low birth weight around 30% ensure and ensure no increase in childhood overweight no increase in zero increase in overweight 30% reduction in underweight that's it next breastfeeding has to be increase for about 50% next reduce and maintain childhood wasting to less than 5% and next one is ministry of home affairs notified fresh rules for the allied special protection group this actually special for sbg sbg commanders have you heard about sbg special protection group okay the ministry of home affairs under ministry of home affairs they work okay they have the, the special protection group will now be handled by an officer who is not less than a rank additional director general dg dg level officer will deal with the sbg he will be heading that special protection group okay uh, actually belong what 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 is the function of this spg it will exclusively look into the protection of prime minister and former prime ministers prime ministers and former prime ministers spg okay this was formed under uh, fixed uh, the through rules issued by minister of home affairs under the an act special protection group act 19 88 okay special protection group act 1988 under this ministry of home affairs is administering this special protection group and who will recruit them this is ministry of home affairs only so next spg is an allied force okay specifically specifically raised for the protection of whom prime minister and former pms and their immediate family next no new parliament inauguration 75 rupees coin yes uh, small this ministry of finance has announced a launch of special coin for 75 rupees to commemorate the new parliament okay this is just a simple information not required the coin will bear the inscription bharat in devanagari script on the left side and india in the english on the right side this is more than enough not required enough okay next one more thing that newly minted 75 rupees coin 
will feature the iconic lion capital of the Ashoka pillar on one side and with the words Satyamaya Jayate below it. Okay. So, this 75 rupee coin is to commemorate new parliament building. It will contain Ashokan ins uh, pillar inscription that is a lion capital Ashokan pillar and the second one is a slogan Satyamaya Jayate quotation and next the coin on the other side next one is left and right one left side is Bharat and the right side is India. By the time India alliance was not formed it seems. <laughs> that is why they had taken otherwise they haven't used that word India. Okay. Design and symbolism. Design and symbolism. So don't get hurt okay. Even I am also coming from that family but I usually see objectively right. So don't get <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the next it will also display the rupee symbol and denomination value of 75 in international numerals beneath under the line capital. Okay, okay, that is fine. Significance of that. This is regarding SPG. The just a small correction has to be done. I will do scrutiny of this document after that. Next, Article 299 of the Constitution in news. Why is it in the news? Supreme Court again mentioning that. Entering into a contract under president's name cannot claim immunity from legal provisions of that contract under article 299. What does it mean? Article 299 allows the government to uh, enter into an, any agreement with foreign countries are for trade purpose only. Okay. But that doesn't mean government can enter into any contract and get immunity under article 299. That was the statement reiterated by Supreme Court. What does it mean? Suppose if I have entered into a contract that my co-brother will take uh, some um, uh, this national highway project. This is an agreement with my co-brother company and my company under article 299. Should I get immunity from article 299 under article 299? No. So, article 299 is providing immunity to the president to enter into contract for business purpose. But that business uh, should never violate certain basic norms and standards. So, any contract should uh, will not uh, have any uh, what you call immunity under Article 299. Those uh, that is that is the statement given by the Supreme Court. So, enter into a contract under President's name cannot claim any immunity from the legal provisions. Okay, any uh, cannot provision from the legal actions under this contract Article 299. Okay, Article 299 is providing that all contracts made in the exercise of the executive power of the union or state and next express it this express it to be made by whom president or the governor of the state so article 299 is granting the center and state government the power to carry on trade center and state government suppose mysore sandal is produced by whom state government in karnataka so they can do trade no problem for example public sector undertaking navaratnas mini ratnas this is also part of some kind of trade business commerce right so, the center and state government can enter into any trade, business or uh, acquire, hold, dispose of property and make contracts for any purpose under Article 298. Under Article 298. Executed on behalf of the President only under Article 299, Class 1. Okay. So, any law has to be executed through the notification issued by President of India. So, there is, for example, 341 has to pass a law to designate a person belongs to scheduled tribe or not, scheduled area or not. Okay. That has to be passed by whom? Law. A law that has to be enacted into a law by the parliament. To implement it, it should be issued by the president of India under article 342. 341 is about law. 342 is about issuing of presidential order to implement 341, the act. And similarly, 298 is about coming into an agreement with respect to trade, business and acquiring any land and position, okay, possessing something with uh, by central or state government and this is immune under article 299 which is executed through the notification issued by the president. Rating, so simple. So likewise, this is a consequential effect after a law is passed or uh, any action is taken by the central or state government. Next. Procedure to be followed for making a contract. What is the procedure actually to enter into a contract? Therefore, I can enter into a contract. This is under Article 298, 299. Just 
my co brother my brother my sister and everybody will enter into a contract with the government is it possible no so there should be a procedure just now i had discussed so in 1954 the top court held that there must be a definite procedure according to which contract must be made by agents acting on the government's behalf and otherwise public funds may be depleted by illegitimate contracts okay what does it mean there should be definite procedure according to which contract must be made by made by agents who are those agents they must act on behalf of the government of india or government of a particular state or public funds may be depleted by illegitimate contracts suppose who is acting on behalf of government here ministry secretary and collected and likewise the people the hierarchy all will come into picture they will prepare a draft and they will issue a notification a tender and tender has to be issued through government order only jivo it should have certain procedure okay and open bidding system has to be allowed and who are giving less bidding then government will get benefit and they will provide that contract to the private party okay this is actual procedure so on behalf of the government there should be a player who can issue, uh, who can enter into the contract otherwise this is considered to be illegitimate contract next it implies that contracts not adhering to the manner given in article 299 class 1 cannot be enforced by contracting party so definitely any contract which is coming into picture from government to the third party this should be done under article 299 class 1 the instructions and the uh, notification given by the president or governor somebody okay however article 299 class 2 is giving that neither the president or governor can be personally held liable for such contracts okay what are the requirements for government or state contracts here as per apex code apex code means supreme court lay down essential provisions here for the government to enter into contract this is actually reiterated by whom again supreme court only they should never get any immunity under article 299 when they enter into contract okay article 299 is providing immunity but all cases will not give you such an immunity from legal provisions okay under article 2 supreme court has mentioned that the apex court has given certain guidelines that three conditions to be met before binding a contract against the government three conditions has to be followed before entering into a contract with a private party for trade and business three conditions to be met what are those three conditions the contract must be expressed it must be executed in writing the first one and second one execution should be why suppose if somebody is not filing fir while you are putting a case then you should ask them you should give me a reason and writing they will not do that why because so the written letter of any designating authority is considered to be an agreement itself okay you no need to say that it is not a bonded uh, it is not a bond or it is not registered agreement or something like that in on a, even on a white paper if some designating authority has written something then it is having a legal validity therefore they will not give you by writing on paper for the actions that they have committed or not committed okay so it is a legal weapon from various uh, legal uh, personalities so the contract must be expressed to be made by governor or president already you know that under okay it should be expressed by the name of governor and president first point second it should be executed in writing only and third execution should be by such persons and in such a manner as the governor or the president might direct or authorize governor or president must authorize that this person is valid to come into an agreement this agreement is valid so that that means the government has entered into this contract with complete delegation okay next the apex court ruling also is saying that referring to 246 law commission report the court is observing when the party appointing an arbitrator arbitrator means a mediator between the parties arbitrator in the state the duty to appoint an impartial independent adjudicator is even more onerous which is very important so the apex court is also reiterating the guidelines given by law commission this is so thus the court rejected the center's reliance on article 299 and saying that article 299 only lays down the formality only 
it is necessary to bind government with contractual liability so therefore any contract which is being done under article 299 will also come under liability of the government that means liability means they should be answerable okay anybody can question also so under article 29 irrespective of official gazet notification came under the sign and seal of president or governor you can question the government that under what circumstances you have entered into an agreement with the private party that is what the liability of the government irrespective of entering into an agreement under 299 article class 1 right 299 article so world's largest grain storage plan world's largest grain storage plan world's largest therefore it may be a potential gk question as well okay world's largest potential grain storage plan this is a cabinet approving that empowerment of an interministerial committee for facilitation of world's largest grain storage plan in cooperative sector in cooperative sector union cabinet constitution and empowerment of an interministerial committee for facilitation of this world's largest grain storage plan in cooperative sector by convergence of various schemes under these various ministries okay what are the what, what are those ministries the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare and ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution and ministry of food processing industries by converging four ministries this world's largest food grain storage has been facilitated by the cabinet committee okay these four ministries are merged to the and, and coming together to form this world's largest storage grain factory something storage storage house for food products so implementation how will it be implemented this is interministerial committee as you have known what are those ministries ministry of food processing and public distribution and farmers welfare consumer affairs okay these four ministries are involved ministry of farmers welfare agriculture farmers welfare consumer affairs and next food and public distribution food processing industry these four ministry this is interministerial committee they came together to form which one world's largest grain storage plan world's largest grain storage plan so this is interministerial committee the therefore this implementation has to be done through guidelines only as, as usual the methodologies of the schemes and respective ministries has to frame those methodologies and they have to mobilize the funds for the development of the infrastructure regarding this world's largest storage grain okay grain storage one and how will they implement through cooperatives only okay through cooperatives for agriculture and other purposes it selected viable primary agricultural credit societies primary this is third third level of cooperatives because district level cooperative societies and state cooperative societies next one last one is primary agricultural credit societies okay pss this is three tier structure in a cooperative society structure right so for agriculture allied purposes it selected viable primary agriculture credit societies how to be incorporated for building this largest grain storage next plan would be implemented by utilizing available outlays provided under identified schemes okay what are the schemes for it the schemes behind it you, you need to use the resources right utilize the resources under various ministries which are implementing various schemes related to food processing food and public distribution agriculture and farmers welfare with the help of cooperatives okay ministry of agriculture farmers welfare and agriculture infrastructure fund agriculture infrastructure fund agriculture marketing infrastructure scheme and mission for integrated development of horticulture midh and submission on agriculture mechanization submission on agriculture mechanization all these schemes under ministry of agriculture will be converged to bring this large world's largest grain storage plan in cooperative sector okay so in cooperative sector you have primary agriculture credit societies these viable viable means what they have sufficient resources and funding and manpower you will find those viable primary agriculture so credit societies these are viable means they are capable they are okay they are self sufficient self sustained these viable pscs primary agriculture credit societies pscs will be taken up and the funds and resources and the equipment manpower will be merged under one four schemes okay which are implemented by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare 
what are those four schemes which are may converged which are not merged this is converged okay sorry convergence means coming together to work for something okay they are coming con converged here ministry of agriculture farmers welfare has been implementing these schemes agriculture infrastructure fund and agriculture marketing infrastructure scheme and mission for integrated development of horticulture and next submission on agriculture mechanization so then you need to learn about pscs primary agriculture credit societies what are these pscs primary agriculture credit societies are village level cooperative credit societies that are a third tier out of this entire cooperative credit structure a third tier cooperative credit structure headed by state cooperative banks at the state level at district level credit from the state cooperative this is state level okay credit from state level cooperative bodies the these cooperative banks is transferred to district central cooperative banks and through district central cooperative banks that operate at district level through them again they will in coordination with primary agriculture credit societies which are at third type of this cooperative credit structure next cabinet approved cities that is a citis okay iis 2.4 from 2023 to 2027 citis that is city investments to innovate integrate and sustain city investments to innovate integrate and sustain okay city investments to innovate integrate and sustain what is this union cabinet recently approved this cities cities means not c c i t i e s c i t i i s okay c i t i that is city investment to innovate integrate and sustain please remember these things 2.0 cities so what is this cabinet recently approved 20 between this program has to be implemented within the time period of 23 to 27 about what is uh, cities this is also a report given in which niti ayog one okay the scheme social sectors okay the citis 2.0 is a program conceived by whom ministry of housing urban affairs and next partnership with french development agency and european union national institute of urban affairs so you have to remember all this there is no other option what are those cities c i t i i s 2.0 program has to be implemented between time period of 23 to 27 and it is an integrated effort from ministry of housing and urban affairs in collaboration with in partnership with french development agency european union and national institute of urban affairs so duration is 23 to 27 for year the program is about selected project promoting circular economy with focus on what is the circular economy so there is no particular end point it is continuously running in nature okay so in a circle what is the starting point no it is continuously running so in a circular economy what is integrated waste management at sea level you see integrated waste management is not end point at level okay the waste collection process and reuse recycle will generate employment and also it will generate it will also be part of certain manufacturing so it is a next climate oriented reform action at the state level next institutional strengthening and knowledge dissemination at the national level at state level what is happening climate oriented reform action at national level institutional strengthening and knowledge dissemination cities aims to leverage scale up to learnings and success of cities 1.0 oh, now we are introducing 2.0 right how will you br uh, bring financial mobility for this cities program 2.0 financial mobility is uh, from the afd that is french development agency french development agency the amount is around 1760 crore and next 
a technical assistance grant of 106 crore from European Union. So, European Union and French Development Assistance are providing financial grant to cities 2.0, which is to be implemented between 23 and 27 by Minister of Housing and Urban Affairs. In single line, this is the entire scheme. What is single line? The grant assistance by French Development Agency and European Union in collaboration with Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs implementing this cities program between 23 to 27. Single line statement, okay. It is launched in 2018 by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in collaboration with National Institute of Urban Affairs as well, one of the teams. <coughs> Next, Tamil Nadu encore opposition to Karnataka's proposal for a dam at Makedatu. This is uh, Makedatu, Mahadai River project. These are always under certain issues only. Okay, Mahadai River, which is Mandovi name to be. And dispute between Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka. Okay, I'll. This is also coming in news several times. I'll tell you. Karnataka minister has said that his state was keen on building a dam across Kaveri at Makedatu. Okay, where is this Makedatu stop project? This is Karnataka, and here Makedatu at the border of this Tamil Nadu region, and which is uh, exactly at the edge of where Kaveri is entering into Tamil Nadu. Makedatu is the region here, and Kaveri River. This is the actual uh, river course. Okay, Karnadu. Makedatu. So, Karnataka minister has said that his state was keen on building a dam across Makedatu. And the Tamil Nadu minister for water resource on the other hand reiterated that Tamil Nadu would oppose the proposal at all levels. They will not entertain this project because next key highlights of this program. Karnataka government has decided to challenge before the national green tribunal. Its decision is to appoint a joint committee for implementing this Makedatu project. Okay, Makedatu is a dispute for a dam which is built by the Karnataka government, which is proposed to be built by the Karnataka government and disputed by whom? Tamil Nadu government and which has actually approached this NGT, National Green Tribunal. So, the joint committee is supposed to look into allegations of unauthorized construction activity taking place in Makedatu where Karnataka had proposed to construct a dam across Kaveri. Makedatu meaning goat sleep. Mark Maker Leap Goat Leap is a deep gorge situated at the confluence of rivers Kaveri and its tributary Arkavati. Okay, tributary Arkavati is merging into Kaveri at a region Makedatu, which is having a shape of goat leap. That is why it is called as Makedatu. Next, Makedatu project 9000 crore project aims to store supply water for drinking purposes of Bangalore city. For Bangalore city, for whom? Around 400 megawatts of power is also proposed to be generated through this project, approved by Karnataka state government and approval from Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Okay, is very crucial because 63% of this forest cover of Kaveri River adjacent area and Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary will be submerged due to this project. 63% of Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary is going to be submerged if this project is coming to picture. Therefore, uh, the uh, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is objecting that project. And there, and again, who has come to the power? Congress government. Next. Therefore, the Congress government has reiterated again Kaveri dispute. Congress government has to show somebody is a villain here. Who is the villain here? The project is not being approved by the central government. So. And again, it has to come into the dispute with Tamil Nadu government because they will never form a government in Tamil Nadu. Therefore, they will not, they will sustain their power in Karnataka by, uh, anchor, I mean, uh, by bringing certain emotions. Ka river, is, river is an emotion there. Next, in 2018, Tamil Nadu approached the Supreme Court against the project even if Karnataka had held that it would not affect the flow of water to Tamil Nadu. So, uh, it is very simple. Even we can resolve that problem. If we are given the chance, okay, we can. Decide. It is very simple, but that resolution will not face them to gain something politically. So, in June 2020, during Kaveri Water Management Authority's meeting, Tamil Nadu reiterated its opposition to project. Okay, simple that everybody is citizen of this country, and ultimately, respect of citizens, everybody is a human being who must uh, meet certain basic amenities like drinking water. So, drinking water has to be provided to everybody. So, no dispute between Tamil Nadu or Karnataka. It is not between states. It is for the cause of human beings. 
very simple so that that should be your statement for your interview irrespective of your affiliation with tamil nadu or karnataka next india rethinking its anemia policy india rethinking its anemia policy why should it why should it rethink uh, while doing such a survey that is a national family health survey sixth report because during national family health survey fifth report and previous reports it has witnessed that our parameter in our parameter of taking this anemia uh, is not up to the uh, up to the standards uh, which are actually had to be done actually uh, what should i do what should i tell you suppose our taking up we, we would like to um, omit that means we would like to remove this anemia report under our national family health survey report under our national family health survey report we would like to omit anemia report why should we omit them the reason here is we are we are our method is faulty nature that was our report okay our fine our method is being used to estimate only hemoglobin levels mostly but when it comes to anemia burden cases anemia is a public health challenge okay the cases it has certain issues with respect to uh, what is that issue not only hemoglobin levels but also folate vitamins b12 and a are also important causes so our national family health survey 6 report has been considering that the report related to anemia should be integrated and holistic in terms of assessment therefore we can get accurate level of anemic uh, affecting areas and people therefore it is not possible for them to integrate this anemic report at present they would like to omit this anemic report from the national family health survey report of 6 okay national family health survey 6 report because of the previous experience that they have faced here according to world health organization anemia is a condition in which number of red blood cells or the hemoglobin concentration within them is lower than normal therefore we are considering hemoglobin levels what about this most common nutritional cause of anemia actually the most common nutritional cause iron deficiency which is because of the deficiency in the folate vitamins b12 and also a vitamin which are important causes of this anemia and next certain chronic diseases such as kidney disease liver cancer and autoimmune disorders can also interfere with the production of these red blood cells okay autoimmune disease means very simple our own immune system can affect our body okay because of this one more challenge so health ministry has noted that anemia is a public challenge and accurate estimates accurate estimates are needed to tackle the crisis therefore the, our national family health survey is not providing accurate estimates with respect to anemia at present therefore we would like to omit that report and have under this nfhs 6 until we get accurate report what is actual report uh, what, what is the report that uh, based on which report they are for considering that we need to omit this anemia report now under this uh, uh, as per our previous experience he is telling that anemia burden has grown alarmingly we nfhs as per nfhs by 2019 to 21 finding that 57% of women in the age group 15 to 49 and 67% children between 6 months and 59 months are anemic that means of all children almost 60% 70% of the children are anemic as per nfhs 5 is it accurate report so if it is absolutely absurd therefore it is not accurately finding the estimates therefore nhfhs 6 is omitting that one this one okay and moreover the corresponding previous times 2015 16 times when nhfhs 4 survey taken place the anemic rate were rates were 53% and 58.6% respectively for women between 15 to 14 in age group for children Are between six months to fifty-nine months, okay, which are who had this anemic condition, and now this anemic condition increased to sixty-seven percent. This anemic condition from fifty-three to fifty-seven percent for women, which is not accurate in terms of its estimation. Therefore, government of India has to come with a new proposal, new model of estimation for anemia. Okay, so therefore, if a statement is given that. as uh, what are the following reports provided by national family health survey okay if it mentions that 
as per national family health survey now government of india considering anemia is one of the major uh, challenging and burden crisis uh, challenging and acute or what do you call the statement is used right efficacy yeah one of the primary challenges to our country is anemia that was statement given therefore government of india has focus concentrated more in national family health survey okay and they are providing accurate estimates and reports so likewise they will twist, twist the statement whatever be the statement that you are reading here you should see through the lens of the upsc mcq therefore it is easy for you to estimate so under nfhs 6 anemia report is going to be omitted so it is very important next national family health survey is a last scale you need to learn about nfhs okay what does it do it will provide multi round survey conducted in uh, conducted by taking samples from various households next the first national family health survey was conducted in 92 93 between 92 and 93 first national health survey the main objective of the national family health survey has been to provide reliable and comparable data relating to health and family welfare therefore under which ministry under health and family welfare ministry under which ministry something that you committed mistake earlier ah uh, fssa food safety and standards authority of india is coming under ministry of health and family welfare is it statutory body yes under 2006 this body has come into picture under food safety and standards act 2006 so wherever you see immediately you should recall all those things which you have read those have been repeated several times okay national commission for women announced that the launch of 100 entrepreneurship awareness programs 100 entrepreneurship awareness programs this is one of the solutions to bring uh, some self sustenance in economy because to make our india uh, top 3 largest economies and 5 trillion dollar economy what should be the possible solutions that demographic dividend and next entrepreneurship smart cities and stand up startup indias and various mudra yojanas and for cottage uh, industries as well uh, make in india programs all these things have to be read several times these are very important for your mains as well so national commission for women announced that suppose i haven't mentioned national commission for women here okay government of india announced that launch of 100 entrepreneurship awareness program under the ministry of under the ministry of entrepreneurship means immediately if i use the ministry with respect to ministry of corporate affairs uh, ministry of something okay there will you will you may commit certain mistakes okay national commission for women in collaboration with whom entrepreneurship development institute of india that is edi announcing launch of 100 entrepreneurship awareness programs for potential women entrepreneurs across the country so aim of this one day entrepreneurship awareness program is to orient re participating women to benefits adopting entrepreneurship as career learn the fine skills and overcome social economic failure so if you fail in upsc you have this opportunity to come into an entrepreneur right as a woman you have that opportunity if this try okay or if you become successful also you can resign that and come into entrepreneurship that is also one of the benefits that you yourself can become brand ambassador for your entrepreneurship after getting rank that is also an advantage so entrepreneurship awareness programs are aimed at developing entrepreneur skills among women so that they could gain knowledge skills motivation to build their own business you can attend these entrepreneurship awareness programs also sometimes if possible just for the purpose of awareness so the national commission for women was set up as a statutory body in 1992 under the national commission for women's act in 1990 next train accidents in india train accidents in india because why have i chosen this one exam again covered system that you have known about it because odisha railway uh, train accident that we, last year took place not last year 6 months ago okay so at least 288 people are feared dead in many injured a major train accident in odisha's balasore district uh, what was the train there eshwantpur howrah express and shalimar chennai express they both collided uh, coming each uh, opposite to each other and the communication system was disrupted during that time therefore Odisha train accident has given uh, has been major uh, prominent themes here okay there may be possible question regarding especially already covered system has been in news several times but during this train accident situation at this time this system has to be read several times if possible what is this train collision avoidance system that is shield train co train 
collision avoidance system train collision avoidance system this is also known to be curvature armor curvature armor what does it do it is electronically equipped system when it looks into the red signal then immediately it will alert the braking system automatically if manually the driver unable to stop that braking system it will automatically stop the trains okay if any two trains are coming opposite to each other immediately it will recognize and it will alert the brake system it will control the speed and itself get immediately stop the train this is actually the cover system or armor system okay this uh, this uh, system is known to be train collision avoidance system that is shield system india's own automatic own automatic safety system is under development since 2012 i have said you that it has been in use for several years but this time it is more important because of the uh, accidents which have been taken place and data is also provided this cover system is very important to reduce these train accidents coming to this one that uh, most of the people who are died because of failing from train are people getting hit by trains therefore if cover system finds that somebody is coming near to the train while moving it will immediately alert the braking system and it will stop itself this is automatic safety system right classification derailments and collisions are rare causes of rail accidents in india classification of rail deaths based on type of accidents okay type of accidents collision derailment so derailments and collisions are very rare in india but very common most prominent train accidents are related to failing from the train or people getting hit by trains falling from train sorry falling from the train not failing falling from the train okay they are coming so suppose a people uh, there is a, what do you call somebody wants to commit something okay they can comfortably go to a fast uh, moving train they uh, come out so train collision system and the accident site is little ahead of actually it is not hit by trains somebody was sleeping on railway lines somebody may themselves commit suicide through trains okay from trains actually this is one of the biggest problems so falling from the train and this is not possible with automated door systems like uh, other trains which are coming in future as well next collision avoidance system this derailment and collisions are very very rare in india actually but still indian government has been pursuing to bring such curvature armor system that is train collision avoidance system shield so our collision avoidance system that is train collision avoidance system tcas later it was changed to curvature armor <laughs> next basically curvature is state of the art electronic system which is automated in nature that was designed to help indian railways to achieve zero accidents it will automatically trigger the braking system it will control speed itself and it will actually alert even driver that when the braking system is being controlled by the curvature system the train a commuter the person who is driving the train will immediately make himself alert as well so indian railways had plans to implement coverage protection system during 23 20, 22 up to a range of 2000 km they are going to test fire the pilot project is coming to coming into picture here during 22 23 they have test fired this coverage system and they are coming to picture next about 34000 km of network will be brought under at present coverage system and very soon entire railway lines will be coming under this shield cover system okay law commission recommending a stronger sedition law that is 2124a okay as you have been seeing because recommending why law commission when 124a was not, uh, was in picture when it was in it was under execution by uh, several governments law commission of india has opposed <laughs> and government uh, supreme court has somebody has actually objected and the activist has objected when government of india wanted to omit this 124a then immediately law commission of india no 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 don't omit completely it is required you need to liberalize that law unnecessarily don't remove it completely likewise okay what is this sedition law nearly a year after supreme court again state that operation of the sedition law they are saying that law commission of india has recommended that provision to be retained with procedural safeguards to 124a has to be retained it should not be removed however certain procedural safeguards must be imported while executing that 124a okay jail term what is this sedition 
it was drafted by british historian lord bobington mccallay in 1837 okay and later it came into picture in the indian penal code in 1870 under which the sedition act uh, lokmanya tilak okay the mahatma gandhi jogendra chandra bose everybody was arrested okay imprisoned due to this sedition and what is mean by sedition this is rajadroham that you say in telugu okay sedition was defined as an act by whoever by words either spoken or written or by signs or by visible representation or otherwise bricks or attempts to bring into hatred or content or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law in india okay this is the statement so you need to mug up certain definitions irrespective of your absolute conceptual clarity because you no need to waste your valuable time for sp spontaneous framing of sentences in the original exam you may miss certain points if you mug it up and retain it in your brain it is easy for you to reproduce immediately you can save some time in your mains answers while you enter into mains you will get to know all these things okay while writing writings of leaders like mahatma gandhi lokmanya tilak jogendra jogesh chandra bose were also arrested under this seditious act as per section 124a of indian penal code sedition is a non bailable offence punishable with imprisonment from 3 years up to life along with a fine this is really heinous with respect to if somebody criticizes the government they will be imprisoned up to life up to life so the kedarnath ruling on sedition actually there were many rulings came before kedarnath but all those rulings have actually uh, criticized the seditious law uh, 124a but kedarnath government has given certain balance of judgment that uh, it has also upheld that this sedition law must exit however it should be cautiously utilized by the government so that five judge constitution bench overruled all previous judgments five judge constitution bench overruled all five judgments previously given regarding this sedition law 124a but kedarnath judgment uh, the constitution bench has upheld this constitutional validity of this ipc section 124a ipc section 124a was upheld and overruled all previous judgments under which constitution bench kedarnath judge bench okay however the court attempted to restrict its scope of misuse naturally court will also give guidelines how to use this sedition law so the court held that unless accompanied by an incitement or call for violence criticism of the government cannot be labeled sedition you can criticize the government it should not come under sedition under article 124a however if it is accompanied by incitement or call for violence then only you can call it is seditious act if it is leading to incitement of violence then only you can consider it as seditious act and mere criticism of the government will not be considered as sedition okay this is a ruling given by whom supreme court apex court constitutional bench okay, under kedarnath case okay law commission of india law commission of india is telling what law commission of india is a non statutory body okay it is constituted by notification of government of india with definite terms reference to carry out research in the field of law so at present it has submitted around 277 reports since 1955 the 22nd commission has been constituted 2 and 1/2 years after it was approved by the union cabinet on february 19 2020 so the present law commission number is 22 22 law commission reports have to be submitted 21 law commission reports submitted and number of reports submitted were 22 law commissions were formed number of reports were submitted were 277 the present law commission is formed on 20 and february something day 19th of february 2020 okay 22nd law commission next free electricity scheme in karnataka it is not required to read much but what is the you uh, publish what, what is the major theme that uh, it is required is grah jyoti scheme it has amalgamated bhagya jyoti kutira jyoti and amruta jyoti schemes it is amalgamated bhagya jyoti kutira jyoti amruta jyoti scheme free electricity scheme introduced in karnataka by congress government so this was criticized several times in 
various news articles that is way just to recall your give you, give you some idea about it uh, the scheme is giving 200 units of free power to domestic consumers and take into account one year average power consumption in 22 23 financial year next nyaya vikas portal created nyaya vikas portal so log into the what is this nyaya vikas portal it has been created monitoring implementation of centrally sponsored schemes if you have any problem with respect to this NIA, uh, implementation of any scheme and also to implement it effectively and efficiently you can go to this nyaya vikas portal and uh, make them executed as early as possible for example if nyaya vikas portal is giving you a seamless access to information related to a particular centrally sponsored scheme okay any government official can go to centrally sponsored scheme they can check deliverables by the central government and what are the requirements that are to be contributed from the state state government as well because all india servants have to collaborate with the central and state government right suppose this nyaya vikas center will help them this is a digital center digital portal are you getting what i am saying nyaya vikas portal simple so we this portal is empowering all stakeholders who are stakeholders just now i have said about a bureaucrat who is a all india servant and state government employee as well and even a group four officer to ias officer and other pub public as well who can visit this portal they can read the guidelines and the fundings uh, which are released the fund released by the central government for execution of this centrally sponsored scheme everything will be given according uh, seamlessly with transparently this is a for information pertaining to what funding documentation project monitoring up to which it is executed that is centrally sponsored scheme and approval central sector scheme centrally sponsored scheme that you might you might have known the distinction between these two 100% it is done by central government central sector scheme central sponsored scheme there may be certain share from the side of the state government as well okay so objectives to provide information on the status of judicial infrastructure in the country and next especially court halls residential units of judges this will help them and what is the fund sharing pattern under the scheme is 60 to 40 percent 60 is to 40 from central state respectively uh, other than northeastern states northeastern states are special category states so 90 is 10 is the ratio so about nyaya vikas what is this under this scheme central assistance is provided to state government union territories administration uh, administrations for construction of court halls and residential units for judicial offices and district judges and subordinate courts the fund sharing pattern will be 60 to 40 ratio for the states other than northeastern states himalaya okay next commission and railway safety what is this commission and railway safety already this is an issue which has been burning for last 6 months right last 6 months means one month it was a burning issue several times it came into newspaper so commission and railway safety but you will be astonished how many organizations are there in railway railway protection force one of the organization it was also formed at railway protection act and this is also one more one more commission commission and railway safety but it is not under ministry uh, it is under air civil aviation ministry it is not under railway ministry but it is talking about commission and railway safety so you may get confused that is why we have chosen this one commission and railway safety which is under ministry of civil aviation previously before independence it was formed before independence it was working under department of posts and air commission and railway safety which was formed in it is a pre independent body okay it was pre independent body it was working under which ministry at the time which department department of posts and air after independence in 1961 it came under civil aviation ministry commission and railway safety crs okay what does it do usually railway safety means what it will produce reports it will take reports okay it will conduct with certain uh, surveys and statistics it will give safety norms guidelines suggestions okay what are what are to be taken so deals with matters related to safety of railway travel operations among some other statutory functions such as any inspectorial investigatory advisory as laid down in the railway act 1989 this is very important that commission on railway safety safety looks into the issues of railway traveling operations and also the statutory functions which are mentioned under railway 
Act 1989. First statement. If a, if they given if they have given it as first statement. Consider the following statement regarding railway safety. The Commission on Railway Safety (CRS). Our first statement will be this one. And second statement will be it works under the Ministry of Railways. What will we what will you do? It inevitably you will choose that one. So therefore you need to be very cautious that it has to come under Civil Aviation Ministry. So you, if you see through the lens of UPSC, you will be very cautious about it. You can okay. Next, it is headquartered in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. It doesn't report to the Ministry of Home Railway Board. If I give you a statement that Commission on Railway Safety look into the operations and functions under Railway Act 1989, and it will also suggest and recommend uh, safety norms to the Ministry of Railways. This is my second statement. It is true. No, it it doesn't give report to Ministry of Railway. It submits its report to whom? Ministry of Civil Aviation under the administrative control of Ministry of Civil Aviation. So the reason or principle behind this is to why should they do that under the administrative control of Civil Aviation? Why should they do that unnecessarily increasing syllabus areas? Okay, because the reason or principle behind this is to keep the CRS insulated from the influence of the country's railway establishment and prevent conflicts of interest means railway has committed mistake it has formed its own commission to investigate they will therefore they will suppress all the balak in the chetu so what is uh, therefore something has to be done some independent body has to enquire into it therefore it is coming under ministry of civil aviation and administrative control any body should be controlled by somebody under executive only okay civil aviation ministry is those of railway ministry there is no problem at all everything will be comfortable but if it is there is some kind of public interest is involved and people are dying and you need to protect them and some day and other day okay we may be traveling on air as well we may also have face some problem so i will look into travel uh, those areas if something happen therefore they will uh, they should be an independent body which should be we should have we should not have any influence from the ministry of railways while dealing with the safety norms of railway sector and operations and functionalities under the railway act 1989 so to rare to prevent that conflict of interest to establish safety norms under this railway sector therefore they have separated and they have they are making this commission on railway safety under ministry of civil aviation okay Kerala tops national food safety index. Kerala tops national food safety index. What is ranking of states and union territories? Union Health Ministry has released this fifth state food safety index in New Delhi. Union Health Ministry released food safety index. Suppose if I give you that Niti Aayog releases health index something as per this health index something stunting, wasting. I have given a statement and next. Uh, Niti Aayog also released food safety index. Therefore, you will commit mistake again. So you need to learn reports which are given by, and uh, whether these are internal reports by the government, and also various international bodies giving reports regarding uh, is, uh, social justice areas like that. Next, Union Health Minister released fifth state food food safety index, ranking of states and union territories in the 22, 23 report as per this report. Kerala is top ranking state followed by Punjab and Tamil Nadu. Among the small states category, Goa is the top ranking state. By and next Manipur, Sikkim are followed by Goa. So okay, next um, they are followed. By, yes, next among the union territories category, Jammu and Kashmir, Chandigarh and Delhi. These are the states. They are the union territories. food safety index about food safety index the state's relentless efforts to ensure food safety and uphold stringent standards have ended to the top spot so solidifying its reputation as a leader in its crucial domain it is not much important but uh, the more major important is revenue generated by the state's food safety department through the imposition of fines for violations of food safety and standards has witnessed an unprecedented increase Okay, this is what uh, major. The health minister in a press conference said, "Remarkable statistics that showcase Kerala's commitment to food safety. They have taken stringent actions against 
people who are not following the norms established by food safety index so these stringent measures help them to focus more on improving their ranks they topped in topping in ranks comparing the data from financial year it is very good in terms of revenue search about food safety index it is an annual assessment released by home food safety standards authority of india again came into picture under which ministry ministry of health and family ministry so so what what are the basic provisions here this is not important the provisions performance ecosystem like that sahakar se samruddhi yojana sahakar means cooperation under which ministry ministry of cooperation okay sahakar se samruddhi yojana the government of india has taken five more important decisions for sahakar se samruddhi yojana five more important decisions samruddhi in a meeting of union ministry of home cooperation and one more thing that you need to important you need to learn is here amisha also involved me who is that minister of home affairs okay but you can you get confused that how will he come into picture here when sahakar se samruddhi yojana is coming because there is a need requirement here what is that requirement because minister of amisha with minister of uh, chemicals and fertilizers and also it is a min- inter ministerial one what are the five important decisions here sahakar se samruddhi yojana the first one is primary agriculture credit societies which are not functioning as fertilizer retailers fertilizer retailers retailers to whom farmers they are not these primary agriculture credit societies are looking into the mobilization of financial resources rather than material resources which are evidently required for the farmers which are essential for the farmers therefore you need to empower pscs to be facilitators for farming sector especially these fertilizer retailers they should also act as fertilizer re- re- retailers will be added and they will be encouraged to function as retailers on the basis of feasibility in a phased manner next pscs therefore farmers may get one stop solution at pscs mobilization of resources in all formats mobilization of resource in the form of monetary resource through pscs in the form of material resources like fertilizers okay <coughs> next pscs which are not currently functioning as pradhan mantri kisan samruddhi kendras will come under this program pradhan mantri pscs presently not coming under pradhan mantri kisan samruddhi yojana now under this program sahakarse samruddhi program what will they do they will train the pscs to bring this kisan samruddhi kendras okay to run this kisan samruddhi kendras under sahakar se samruddhi scheme and pscs will be connected with marketing of organic fertilizers okay especially fermented organic ones next under market development scheme assistance so what is this pscs should act as one stop solution as i said farmers require financial resources one side okay pscs are acting on those areas only till now therefore the sahakar se samruddhi yojana if comes into picture what will happen pscs will also facilitate them chemical fertilizers organic fertilizer fermented fertilizers and they will integrate various schemes like liquid fermented organic marine phosphate various schemes like uh, related to organic farming and next third aspect is marketing market development assistance okay pscs market development assistance scheme of department of fertilizers and the companies will act as an aggregator for the small bio organic producers to market their end product so next pscs can also be employed as drone entrepreneurs pscs drone entrepreneurs means agriculture so drone drones are very helpful for fertilizer distribution right in the farm field so spraying fertilizers and pesticides these drones so drones can also be used for survey of property as well agriculture property so pscs will act as one stop solution under the sahakar se samruddhi yojana therefore the ministry of home affairs and ministry of agriculture farm and ministry of chemical fertilizer something everybody integrated together and working for this cooperative sector primary agriculture societies ultimately sahakar se samruddhi yojana is a collaborative effort of various ministries and the nodal agency is ministry of corporate the ministry of cooperative societies
instead of corporate societies. Benefits of these decisions, as you know that this is subject to, you can write many benefits. Ministry of Corporations, Futuristic Business, Bringing Sakar Se Samruddhi Yojana. Shakti for Women, Free Bus Travel Scheme rolled out in Karnataka. Okay, what is the benefit of it? Just I would like to reiterate that because uh, female workforce participation is very less compared to other countries in uh, compared to other parts of the world in India. Therefore, to increase this female workforce, what did what, what uh, this scheme would be helpful? That is the actual argument put forth. So it is up to you how to argue against it or in favor of it. Okay, you can read many articles as well J uh, to objectively justify your valid point. Next, Operation Amanath. What is this Operation Amanath? Just this is also one of the important that I have said you uh, earlier regarding railways. Commission on Railway Safety already we have discussed. And next, Shield, that is Kavach or Armour System that we have discussed because the recent incidents which has taken place, therefore it is very important, prominent, which shook the entire nation, that incident. Next, important one is Railway Protection Force, okay, which was established under Railway Protection Force Act in 1957. Uh, it had mandated the work to the Railway Protection Force. What does it do? This function, this present initiation will tell you what is the function of Railway Protection Force. Railway Protection Force actually, you, if, you, uh, if you have lost your luggage, what will you do? You can go to the portal, you can give complaint to the Railway Protection Force in the portal itself. Railway Protection Force will register that complaint, will definitely update you how you have lost your baggage. Okay. And they will ask you the details related to baggage and they will see, uh, follow, uh, they will do certain level of follow up. Okay. The likewise, Railway Protection Force has implemented this operation, Amanath. They have recovered the lost luggage and baggage of various passengers. Okay. Especially during disasters and problems, something happened. So, Mission Amanath initiative by Railway Protection Force to track the lost luggage. They successfully implemented, they have get, they got back various baggages of the passengers which were registered in their portal itself, that is Indian Railway.gov.in. Railway Protection Force has been working. Uh, it was mandated by which act? Railway Protection Force Act 1957. So, till now we have completed regarding Railways Commission for Railway Safety and TA uh, um, is the automatic. Uh, say uh, collision avoidance scheme that is shield operation uh, coverage armor and next this one railway protection force next first national conference on tribal writers held in jnk already it is exhausted it seems 720 how many articles i might have finished around 35 articles i came to 80th article it seems first national conference of tribal held and next Yes, one is the birthday anniversary of Ram Prasad Bismil, and this is also important. Just I'll give you one simple orientation regarding tribal writers held in Jammu and Kashmir, first national conference of tribal writers. Because Jammu and Kashmir, why I am reiterating Jammu and Kashmir? It is also performing well with respect to food safety index among all union territories and tourism sector of Jammu and Kashmir. And next, the literature which has been emanated from Jammu and Kashmir, which is prominent. And the conferences held, G20 conferences related to it. And now, because Jammu and Kashmir has been growing and normalized and integrated streamlined into the mainstream society. Okay, after abrogation of 370. And the number of security perspective of two, also number of stole penalty also reduced. And the revenue generation from tourism also increased. And the employment sector increased. And reservation to the marginal sections were also introduced in Jammu and Kashmir. And CRPC, CPC were also introduced. And like Ranbir penal code was removed in Jammu and Kashmir. So everything was streamlined and integrated in terms of judiciary, security, development, all aspects. So these are the dimensions that you need to write after abrogation of Article 370. What are the developments that have been taken place in social sector, economic sector and security aspect. In social sector that food safety index and economic sector that tourism and contribution and service sector and next security. So that is why I have been telling you and literature as well art forms literature in Jammu and Kashmir for again the movies were released in Jammu and Kashmir they are successfully being run in Jammu and Kashmir okay 
at firm. These are the dimensions that you need to write for your mains examination. For that purpose, I have given you as value addition and substantiation for your points. Next, Ram Prasad Bismil, Hindustan Social uh, Republican Army was the organization, okay, which was founded in 1924, and it constitu its, its constitution was drafted by whom? Ram Prasad Bismil only. He was part of Mainpur Conspiracy of 1918. Mainpur Conspiracy of 1918. What did he do during that time? Young uh, Bismil selling books that were not prescribed by government. Okay, and what was and also he published pamphlet titled Deshwasiya ke naam. That means distributed it along with his poem Man Mainpur ki Pratigna. What is that Mainpur ki Pratigna? To loot government coffers. Okay, this conspiracy and he also involved in uh, conspiracies along with Chandrasekhar Raja and Ashwakullah Khan decided to loot a train in Kakori near Lucknow. Kakori near Lucknow. He was hanged on 19th December 1927 at Gorakhpur jail. Death. So why have I chosen? Because 126th birth anniversary of Ram Prasad Bismil which has come into news and the nation recently celebrated this 126th birth anniversary of him. He born in 19, 1897 in Uttar Pradesh, Shahjahanapur district. And he joined Arya Samaj, which was founded by Dayanand Saraswati in 1875. Okay. So, this is about Prasad Bismi. I think you remembered everything about him. And these are the articles that again, Kanya Siksha Pravesh Utso. This is also important because of amalgamation of various schemes under this. Because about this program, I would like to tell you, they have the program builds upon existing schemes existing schemes were beti padavo beti bachavo and next adolescent girls scheme for adolescent girls and national education policy upon these upon this means based on the provisions mentioned in these schemes and policy new education policy is there and scheme for adolescent girls and next beti padavo beti bachavo the themes which were mentioned in this were identified by the government of india and they have given one stop solution scheme that is what Kanya Siksha Pravesh Utsu. Kanya Siksha Pravesh Utsu. Upon these three areas. And it has actually recognizing shared nutritional targets. Shared nutritional targets of Ministry of Women and Child Development combining three programs. What are those three programs? Anganwadi Centers, what is Integrated Child Development Scheme under this? Next scheme for adolescent girls. Next portion abhiyan. Portion abhiyan. Scheme for adolescent girls and anganwadis. These were working under Ministry of Women and Child Development. They had certain nutritional targets. These nutritional targets were also incorporated and recognized under this Kanya Siksha Utsu. Something. Okay. What is called? Pravesh Utsu. Okay. Next. This is working under which ministry? Ministry of Women and Child Development. Ministry of Women and Child Development. Okay. May two, because they would like to bring at least uh, uh, disempowered, less opportune people, less fortune people, okay, to reintegrate them who are deviated and distracted from mainstream education, to make them integrated into this nutritional enrichment and also the quality education, right? Under Beta. This reintegration of 1 lakh girls into this mainstream education system was taken place. That is Kanya Sri Siksha Pravesan Utsho. Okay. Kanya Siksha Pravesh Utsho. Siksha means education. Pravesh means to reintegrate them. Okay. This is program. Stands as a significant step towards promoting gender equality and empowering young girls through education. About Ministry of Women and Child Development, it is not required. It is very easy to know. So, the scheme is uh, actually focusing on nutritional targets which are actually determined by various other schemes. Okay, what is the nutritional target uh, schemes related to them? Anganwadi and next uh, under ICDS and next portion Abhyan and next this one adult scheme for adolescent girls. Okay, general consent to CBA, Tamil Nadu government again. After West Bengal, it is Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu rejected CBA's entry into the state. General consent is mandatory to enter into CBA in any state. General consent of whom? 
the respective state government okay uh, we, without the consent of the state government cba should never interfere except certain conditions if it is directed by the court high court or supreme court therefore cba will enter into it if it is an if it is an already existing case within the purview of the cba suppose a case is filed in karnataka karnataka has provided general consent but the case has links in telangana as well therefore cba will come into telangana irrespective of general consent given by telangana government like that so tamil nadu withdraws general consent means it doesn't want cba to enter into because they don't want cases against them <laughs> okay so simple so tamil nadu announced that it has withdrawn the general consent given to the central bureau of innovation uh, what is this uh, cba cba is not a statutory body previously it was established under delhi special police establishment act under section 6 and later a notification by ministry of home affairs actually uh, came into picture that is cba it voluntarily what uh, comes into picture when a uh, direct uh, corruption practice comes into place okay supreme court has also provided certain exceptions guidelines cba to enter into state okay uh, the supreme court high court can order cba to investigate a crime anywhere in the country without consent of the state so through supreme court you can enter consent doesn't apply in cases where someone has been caught red hand red handed taking a bribe okay withdrawal is not applicable to cases directly consent doesn't apply in cases where someone has been caught red handed taking a bribe next withdrawal is not applicable to cases in which the investigation is already in progress that i have told you so which what are other states west bengal mizoram and punjab etc who withdrew the cbi consent so now it is under the administrative control of ministry of personal i'm sorry how many i have told ministry of uh, that is uh, with respect to other ministry of personal pension and public grievances government of india is looking after the administration of cbi and cbi was uh, after santana uh, ministry of home affairs a resolution passed by ministry of home affairs in 6, 1963 after a committee santana committee reported okay so it is not a statutory body it was formed under a resolution passed by ministry of home affairs but it is now administered under ministry of personal and pension public grievances okay it is formed through a resolution passed by ministry of home affairs but administration is under the control of ministry of personal and pension public grievances and which committee recommended santanam committee views on uniform civil code recommendation with respect to law commission of india so already uh, we have discussed around 40 articles or 37 articles i haven't remembered we did a rapid marathon here i think you might have remembered all these things uh, i will edit all this all this document okay i will give you time gap of one day saturday and sunday you will be writing exam on this center document okay Uh, all we had whatever we have discussed for last 3 days it will be in your brain at this time so uh, remaining topics that i i may complete at least 100 topics for next coming 2 days if possible or 80 topics and remaining topics will be read by you and try to attempt the questions that are given from these do- from this document only from national news national events and next week you will be continuing international relations any gray areas are ge- uh, missed in this document those will be covered in the final grant test as well okay so what is a uh, simple thing that national news i may be covering at least 200 plus topics a remaining 100 topics you may you try to complete them in one day from morning to evening okay and just don't waste your valuable time for reading current affairs entire day except one day for saturday okay remaining day till 5 o'clock you must have read your static portion here you will be spending only 2 to 2 and 1/2 hours time this is enough for you to complete entire current affairs of 1000 plus topics so, and you will be writing exam on sunday and reading and revising the gap areas which are missed in the document on saturdays okay you yourself no need to read 
current affairs unnecessarily except on saturday the saturday will be revising day for entire week it is saving valuable time right so you can complete thousand topics here you can finish by reading saturdays and writing sundays okay by spending some time in the classroom and in the day times in the data you need to spend some uh, most of your time for csat and gs1 paper static component okay do you, while reading these current affairs also the static component will also be completed in terms of international organizations the various polity articles and, and apart from schemes and policies which are current in nature most static portion will be completed right during your national news and international news so all the very best and thank you i no need to do recap at this moment okay it is already exhausted okay i'll take a leave all the best thank you